202 and on the word of zip code 33. I said, how in the world do I expect to hold on to these big five pound bands with these zip codes? And, uh, but I, I understand now why these other big ones got away. <laughs> but they, you know, got some uh, bigger rods uh, and Brother Wonder put one on Facebook. Big old crime. And I think Brother Love, I think somebody Brother gave Brother Love that all day, all day he caught that big old fish. But he said he did. <laughs> but you know, we had fun with those fish tails we had. And uh, we may have stretched it a little bit. <laughs> but we enjoyed those days, didn't we, Brother, we, Brother Love? We enjoyed those days. And, uh, but I want you to uh, turn with me here to the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 5, and start at verse 17. Job, chapter 5. Behold, so 17. Behold, Happy is the man whom God corrected. Happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore despise not thou the chastening, chastening of the Almighty. God said don't despise what he corrected you. You know some people they are they are don't like to be corrected. Do they? And God turns some of them over to a reprobate mind. Some don't like to be corrected. He turns them over to a strong delusion to believe a lie and be damned. He turns some of them over to um, uncleanness and to this old, um, what are they having this thing next week? Easter. That came from the word asteroid. And Asteroid, you know, she was a, a goddess, female goddess. She had six breasts on one side and six breasts on the other. <laughs> she was a whore. Y'all ain't never read about these things. And Jezebel was one. Well, they know what Both of them together. And these are the arms. Uh, you know, uh, somebody was asking me a while back, well, you don't think people listening, well, they'd be listening. But they was telling me that, you know, we don't, we don't commit fornication. We don't go to churches that preaches and then practice something different than the Bible. That's spiritual fornication. I said, yeah, they was, they was listening, wasn't they? <laughs> but it's good to know that people listen and uh, understand it. As I was saying this morning, I appreciate Brother Chuck taking it last Saturday night for us, Brother Ephraim on a Tuesday, and Brother uh, Hank and Ted and our young people Friday, Brother James the other Tuesday night. And I do appreciate good sound word coming from these brothers and of course these sisters you know they uh, have such a, uh, a a good solid word inside of them don't they sound word in them it's not a bunch of sounding brass and chinking and cymbal but it's the pure word that flows out and that's what's going to make a difference. And the scripture tells us in Proverbs 19 and verse 27 that if folks stop listening to instruction, they'll go astray. If we get to the point where we don't need to be instructed, don't need to be corrected, get to the point where we think that 
Can't nobody tell us nothing. We go straight. And that's what I was saying on this. Be careful. Uh, don't let a spirit set up in you because it opens the door for deception, for strong delusions. Another spirit to come in and lead you astray. So don't ever open the door for uh, these uh, iniquities, iniquities, these things that hidden, can't see them on the outside, but they deep in the spirit. They're down in the heart. They want, can't nobody see them. We shout with them. You know, we go to church with them. We go home with them. Go to our job with them. But God sees them. And these are the, like the brother, uh, what's your name here? Brother Hardy. Huh? Brother Hardy. Brother Hardy. Like Brother Hardy was saying, it's the small foxes that clips the vine where the grapes cannot develop and bring forth new wine. Because these little small foxes clips them. These small things in our lives keeps the new wine from flowing like it was supposed to flow in us. But let's read that Job 5, 17 through 20. Behold, happy is the man. Happy is the man. Whom God corrected. Whom God corrected. Therefore despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. Don't despise the chastening of the Almighty when God corrects us. Don't despise it. Don't get mad. Stay at home. Well, they shouldn't have said that about me. Shouldn't have embarrassed me. Shouldn't have done this or done that. Sometimes I have to do things openly because people openly in their testimony disrespect me. And I have to correct it. All understand? I'm trying to deal with things, certain issues in a private way with people, but when they bring it out open and try to pull you into their open, I have to openly correct those things. I don't do it to embarrass or to shame or to bring a reproach, I mean, or, or to bring, um, to, to offend or to provoke nobody. But I have to do those things to let folks know you can't come in here and start going out. You know, pastor going down, he always be with us, you know. We don't, we don't get up here and say stuff like that. Like Brother Ethan was saying uh, Tuesday night, you know, let's get in there and stand up for the truth and stand up for one another. And not allow people think they can just walk on us, but it's not us. Jesus said, if you uh, touch one of these, you're touching me. We're all members of that one body. And we stand up for one another. Finish reading that. For he make it sore. For he make it sore. And bind it up. And bind it up. He wound it. He wound it. And his hands make home. And his hands make home. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. He shall deliver you in six troubles. Yea. Uh -huh. In seven, there shall no evil touch thee. And in seven, no evil will be able to touch you. Well, I was just thinking about, Lord, what about these six troubles? <laughs> but you know, for every trouble, there is a solution. There is an answer. And God gives us answers for well, for instance, right here in Psalms chapter 91, verse 11 and verse 12. Psalms 91, verse 11 and verse 12. Let's read that. One of you brothers, sisters, one of y'all. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Now listen, he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep thee in all of our ways. To keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands. They shall bear you up in your hand. The devil tried to tempt Jesus to commit suicide by jumping off of a big uh, mountain, a, a, a big temple, and quoted that scripture to Jesus, didn't he? But the devil is slick. He'll quote something, but he won't quote the full revelation of it. Jesus, the 
Scripture also said, Thou shalt not what? Tempt the Lord thy God. The devil quoted that scripture and Jesus turned around and quoted another scripture. Yeah, but you're not supposed to tempt it. Get behind the devil. Go ahead, finish reading that. They shall bear thee up in their hands. They shall bear thee up in, in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Keep your foot. Dash your foot against a stone. You know, that was a place in God where uh, all these accidents happen every day. Things happen every day to people. And uh, some people, you know, they get shot. Um, I remember in the town that I uh, was raised in, there was a policeman chasing somebody. And while he was chasing him, you know, he shot at random in the neighborhood. And my sister, my older sister, was holding. Um, my baby sister. And my baby sister was just a few months old. And my older sister was older, of course. And the bullet that the police shot in the neighborhood, you know, it uh, just barely did miss my baby sister, Susan, you know what I'm saying? And my older sister, it hit, you know, it hit that fence the sort of ricochet and hit my older sister in the head. But God miraculously had mercy on my older sister. And you know God sent his angels. A lot of times, how many times have you been close to an accident? Uh, dangerous that you was not even aware of that could have took you out of here. But unseen Protection was there. That's what he's talking about. God knows how to protect you. We had a fire. And uh, our home burnt, our house burned up. And my brother, something happened. He crawled out of the house. Of course, one of my brothers was burned up in the house. But my other brother, you know, he miraculously was kept. Crawled out of the house. God kept him. Didn't he? And but you know, I, I'm thinking all the different times. I'm sure every day when you're out on the highways you see uh, people texting and being distracted with their phones and almost hit you, you almost hit somebody. Well, who's to say that God doesn't have an angel there preventing that? He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways unless you have a fatal accident. Unless you, you know, I was just a boy and I jumped into 20 some of them think, because I seen, you know, my brothers do, I figure, hey, I, ain't, I haven't done had no swimming lessons or nothing. I jumped that much straight to the bottom. My brother had to go all the way down to get me <laughs> and bring me back up. Another time, we was uh, playing ball and a, 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 a wild bull come in our neighborhood. He was coming straight at me. And my uh, neighbor snatched me just in time before that bull could trample me, kill me. And I could go on, and I'm sure you could go on, but you know, God saw that you was going to be profitable, that you was going to bring souls in, that you was going to be important in this kingdom in these last days. That's why God had kept you. Angels right there that you didn't even know was there protected you. There's no telling how many angels was here in 2008 when that tornado came through here. And you could look out the side and you could see it was camouflaged. But you could see some clouds, some low clouds going. And my grandson, Mark, he came and got me and said, Papa, look, look, look. There it is. 
And we can see it from right here. It was cloaked, camouflaged. But yet, God had his angel protecting us. Look at how God in 20, what was that, 2011? The one that hit in Jonathan. God miraculously, one young man, he and his friend driving. His friend was driving. He was on a, in the passenger seat. And God miraculously kept him. They, their car was picked up and flipped in, in air. His friend died, but he landed on his feet. Just a few bruises. But God, and we can go on and on, but this is what he's talking about. How that his angels are ministering spirits. And when you don't see them, they're right there protecting you. Read on Matthew 18 and verse 10. And Hebrews 1 and verse 14. Exodus 23 and verse 20. All of these. Read that. Uh, man, um, what did you read? Read more. Luke 4 and 10. Read that one. What do y'all got there? Luke 4 and 10. Read that one. For it is written. For it is written. He shall give his angels charge over thee. He shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee. That's it. That's what I want to just quoted. Uh, Jesus, I mean the devil was quoting that scripture from Psalms 91 and verse 10 and 11. But uh, Psalms 34 and verse 7. Read that one. Psalms 34 and verse 7. Anyone else got that one? Yes. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. See, God's angels are encamped. Round about them that fear him. And deliver them. And deliver them. I'm glad I got the fear of God in me. Aren't you? His angels are encamped about you. To deliver you. Because you walk and you have the fear of God. That reverence, that respect, that honor for God. His angels has been assigned to protect you. Is that all of that? That's a good one too. And what, what, which one was that? Matthew 18 and 10. Read that one. To heed that uh -huh. he despise not one of these little ones. Uh -huh. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Their angels. Even the little ones have got an angel protecting them. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Hebrews 1 and verse 14. And the, are they not all ministering spirits? Uh huh. Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Ministry, these angels are ministering spirits. Another one here, Exodus 23 and verse 20. Well, oh, I need to get that one. Sister Gregory, get Zechariah 2 and 5. Exodus 23 and verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee. Behold, I send an angel before you. To keep thee in the way. To keep you in the way. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Ain't that something? Yes, sir. See, God is showing us that we have protection through these angels. And there's so many more others. But that's the first level of our protection. First level of, you know, God's keeping us. There's, there's demons out there. Things you, the spirits you can't see. Demon powers. Well, the demons out there. And that's why God has his angels uh, keeping you, protecting you. 
Okay, let's read Zechariah 2 and verse 5. For I, saith the Lord, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire. Will be unto her a wall of fire. I was talking to you about that this morning. How God will be a wall of fire. Fire, fight, fire with fire. That's how the Hebrew boys was miraculously kept and protected because that wall of fire that protected them kept them from that furnace that was heated set time hotter. And that's what God is saying. I will be a wall of fire. You can't see it. But God said, I put a wall of fire around you. I'm glad I'm saying this ain't just something we just read. This is real. All of this. This is how uh, the Hebrew boys was kept from burning a wall of fire. Read another one here. Well, I skipped. Skip that one. Thank you, Jesus. The first level of your protection is what? Angels. Second level of your protection is what? See? I don't know that the devil got too many chances here. <laughs> A wall of fire. So we're going to need this. The reason why we're reading this, this is something that we're going to have to have. We're going to have to have these angels. And we're going to have to have a wall of fire around us, protecting us through um, all of the evils that's fixed to break loose upon this earth. And these gates of hell that are being loosened. And these demons that are coming from these pits. We're going to have to have this protection. And this is why I told you these Hebrew boys went into the fiery furnace with this wall of fire. And not one hair on their head was burnt or siege. Because they had this invisible wall of fire protecting them from the heat. That's why they was able to walk in the midst of the furnace of fire that was seven times hotter than anything that was on earth. The, the the fires of hell couldn't, couldn't touch them because that wall of fire. Stay with God. This is what's going to keep you is that wall of fire in these last days. Can I read another one? That's your second level of defense. Another one is right here in Isaiah 59 and verse 19. And Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. But Isaiah 59 and 19, read them. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. From the west. From the west. And his glory from the rising of the sun. Yes. When the enemy shall come in. When like an enemy. Shall come in like a flood. Shall come in. Huh? When the enemy shall come in. What is it to say? Like a flood. Come on. When the enemy shall come in, come on. Lack of flood. What? The Spirit of the Lord. The, when the enemy shall come in, God says, Lack of flood, my spirit. When the enemy shall come in, lack of flood, the Spirit of the Lord. Uh huh. Shall lift up a standard shall against him. Lift up a standard against him. A lot of times I read that scripture, when the enemy shall come in like a flood. But what it originally, when the enemy shall come in, Pause. Lack of flood. I'm going to stop it. Lack of flood. My spirit. He may come in troubled waters everywhere. But I got a, a greater standard. I got a greater force. Like a flood. I'm going to stop it. Like a flood. I'm going to stop drowning him out. I'm going to quit. I'm going to put him at a place where he can't destroy you. When the enemy shall come in, lack of flood, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to have some grain. 
I'm going to have something that's going to overpower him. What I'm going to have is going to be such a force, such a protection, it's going to be like a flood. Like a flood, I'm going to quench the violence of the fire. Like a flood, I'm going to put out all his attacks. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Like a flood, I'm going to stop every weapon. Hallelujah. That's right. You know, and another one here, talking about like a flood, God's going to stand up to him. Well, here's uh, uh, another one here in Exodus chapter 7 and verse 10 through 12. It speaks about, you know, um, Moses brought ten miraculous signs and wonders, miracles. And the devil was not going to be outdone, so the devil, he brought in lying signs, didn't he? And that's what's fixing to happen now. You know, we're going to have to have something real, because the devil is going to cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of man. It ain't going to come from them, but get inside a man to deceive the eyes. And he's going to have all kinds. Of, you know, demons have such power until these witch doctors can actually uh, change into a beast or something. That's the kind of power they got. You all know that. Some of these witch doctors have such power until they can change. The form of them can change. It's more than science fiction. These things, they even have that kind of power. But read that verse. Verse 10 through 20. And as Moses and Aaron. And as Moses and Aaron. Went in unto Pharaoh. Uh huh. And they did so as the Lord had commanded. Yes. And Aaron cast down his rod. Yes. Before Pharaoh. And before his servants. Uh huh. And it became. A serpent. And it become a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men. Then Pharaoh called the wise men. And the sorcerers. And sorcerers. Now the magicians. And the musicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner. They also did in like manner. With their enchantment. With their enchantment. See, you ain't got to know me, Moses. But go ahead, finish reading. For they cast out every man his rod. They cast out every man his rod. But they had. They charm theirs. Moses was a real stick. But these musicians, they charm theirs and made them, you know, like they was, you know, you know, their um, cunningness and their charm. Sorcery. Go ahead. They cast down every man his rod. Cast down every man his rod. And they became serpents. And they became serpents. But Aaron's but rod. Aaron's rod swallowed up their rod. Swallowed up their rod. See, we're going to have, we're going to be anointed by the Holy Ghost. The devil has got people, they're going to be anointed, you know, to prophesy lies. The, the demons carry an anointing. False prophets carry an anointing. But the anointing upon us that's going to flow out of us is going to swallow up anything the devil has got. What God's going to do for us is going to be so much greater until it's going to swallow up all these lies and all these, the Bible says Satan come with lying signs and deceivable or in 2 Thessalonians. Lying signs. Read it. I mean this in 2 Thessalonians chapter Five somewhere over in there. Read that one right quick. Second Thessalonians, maybe chapter. Read that. One. And with all the secretness. There it is. With all the secretness of unrighteousness. Uh huh. And then that perish. Back up and read a scripture to up above that. Okay. What verse is that? What is it at? Second Thessalonians. Uh huh. Two and nine. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse. Verse nine. 
and verse Start at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. What is the mystery of, of, of God? Christ in us. Christ in us. What? The hope of glory. The hope of glory. The mystery of God in us is Christ in us. The hope of glory. Well, the devil always tries to substitute everything that God does. Finish reading that. For the mystery of iniquity. And the mystery of iniquity. If God is fixing to work in us, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devil, and do all these great things, the devil always got a substitute. And the mystery of the iniquity is what? Does already work. Is already working. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Yes. And then shall that wicked one, I mean, then shall that wicked be revealed. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Uh -huh. Even him. Even him. Listen. Whose coming Listen. is after the working of Satan. Yes. With all power. With all his efforts, yeah, going to get power to uh, false prophets, false teachers, false believers. That's why we're going to have to make sure we got the real. Because that's going to be, he's going to actually give them a, a, a certain amount of power. Going to be so strong that it's going to deceive a lot of people. We can go ahead and read that. With all power. All power. And signs. And signs. Power and signs. And lying wonders. And lying wonders. And with all deceivableness. With all deceivableness. Deceivableness. Or deceivableness. Uh -huh. Of unrighteousness. And them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth. Because they don't want to open their hearts to the truth. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. See? And it's going to be so strong. It's going to be a, 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 such a strong delusion. Read verse 11. And for this cause. For this cause. God shall send them strong delusion. You know, God don't send a lot of people strong delusion because they don't want the truth. They don't want the truth. He's going he to uh, send people strong delusion because they want to hold on to a spirit of iniquity. They want to hold on to, to uh, unforgiveness. They want to hold on to something that, you know, to justify themselves, to make themselves look righteous. And to try to make the church or the pastor, you or me, look like we're wrong. But yet, they themselves have been blinded and turned over to them. A strong delusion. See, strong delusion. So like I told you, one of the strong delusions that hit the world is when um, they brought in this thing about um, um, evolution. How did man say that man come from monkey? And say that, um, you know, you know they told us this Darwin's theory when we was kids. This is a strong delusion that, that, that man wasn't created in the image of God. That man came from animals and, and eventually animals evolved from the sea and from creatures in the sea and all that kind of stuff. This is a strong delusion that was put in us to keep us from believing in God. Wasn't it? But it's a lie. The devil told all this stuff to us. Finish reading that. And for this cause, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. God will send people strong delusion because they don't want to come to the door. Because they don't want to turn loose the liquid that is inside of them. Because they don't want to turn loose and humble themselves and admit that they missed it. One thing God told us a long time ago. He said, you know, when you miss something, humble yourself right then and there and stop and admit, look, I was wrong. Look, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I have the wrong spirit. Don't hold on to it because it would lead you astray. Never hold on to a spirit. Never hold on to something that um, will warp your mind. 
I mean, that's what's happened to the LGBTQ community. A strong delusion got a hold to them. A lot of people actually believe. A lot of men actually think they're women. But women actually think they're men. And they think that God accepts that stuff. And preachers don't stand up and tell them a uh, difference. God says, right and divide the word of truth. We need to stand up and let people know that there are lying spirits, seducing spirits, strong delusions, doctrines of devils, deceiving people. That's out there. And you need to read and study. You young people, study to show yourself approved so you can rightly divide the word of truth. Pray. Ask God to feed you with the spirit of truth so you won't be deceived and won't be led astray by religious spirits. Anyway, Abram, he speaks about, read that again, Exodus 7 and verse 12. Read that one again. For they cast down every man his rod, uh -huh. and they became serpents. Yes. But Abram's rod swallowed up their rods. Abram, this revival, this real anointing, these real gifts, the real power of God is going to swallow up all this stuff that's false. It's going to show it up for what it is. Stay with the truth. I remember my teacher. I remember in the third grade. My teacher said, you know, a lie can uh, travel overnight. It travels around the world overnight. But by the time it gets back, the truth is just don't go and erase it. Showing up for what it really is. And the truth is going to prevail against false teaching, lies, strong delusion. The truth is going to swallow up all this false. Stay with truth. Stay with the truth. Amen. That's another, you know, he going to Swallow up all this stuff that is fixing to cause millions to be deceived. We got to have something real. We got to have something. He says, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We got to have something greater than what these witch doctors have. I mean, these witch doctors, I've been in the country and I've seen them how they baptize people into the devil and fire would come and come inside of these people. They would go on a fast for 21 days and the devil would enter inside of them and they would perform lying signs and all kinds of evil things. And the only way that's going to stop that God's going to have to swallow it up with the truth. The truth is going to be a, a wall of defense against these lying signs and lying wonders and strong illusions. Amen. And can I give you a fourth? Line of defense? Read over here in Matthew chapter 14 in verse 30 and 31. Matthew 14, verse 30 and 31. But when he saw the winds boisterous, when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid. He was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried, uh -huh. saying, Lord, Lord save me. Lord, save me. That's the fourth line of defense. Jesus, save me. Jesus is your fourth line of defense against these diabolical powers. These demon spirits, these forces that's fixing to come in and try to sweep you off your feet and do everything they can to steal, kill, and destroy you. He's your fourth line of defense. That's a pretty good one, man. I mean, the devil trying to, well, 
Read another one here. This is, goes on with the fourth one. Mark chapter 4, verse 38, or verse 35. Start at verse 35. Mark 4, start at 35 and go to 41, right quickly. And the same day when the evening was come, same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Let us pass to the other side. And when they had said, how many y'all want to make it to the other side? The other side of tribulation. The other side of all of this that is uh, about to break loose upon the earth. Let us pass over. I'm going to make it to the other side. Go ahead. And when they had sent away the multitude, when they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. Uh huh. And there were also with him other little ships. Yes. And there arose a great storm. Say it then. A great storm fixed to rise. There arose a great storm of wind. Of wind. And the waves. A, a storm of winds and waves and doctrines of men. A storm is fixed to invade this earth. That's what he told us over there in Matthew chapter, I believe, chapter 16. Who do men say that I am? Some say that John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. Who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Blessed are thou, Simon, boy, Joel. Flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my Father, which is in heaven. And I say unto you that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, this revelation, the word of God is a rock. The word of God is a revelation. He that hears this word of mine and believe it and feel upon it, then when the winds blow and the storms come and the floods come, they'll stand and they'll make it to all that the devil throws against them. Because you build it upon the rock, on this rock. Jesus is the rock. His word is going to establish you during these times. But on this rock, I will build my church. And the what? See, the gates of hell are being opened in these last days. One of the gates I told you about is this perverse spirit. That's one of the gates of hell. Another one of the gates of hell, this old Jezebel spirit. This Jezebel spirit is what, and this Android, uh, this old Jezebel, and this Android, this is a, 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 huh? No, this Android spirit, I mean this uh, Jezebel spirit, and, and this, you know, Esther, Astro. This asteroid spirit. These gates of hell. What in the world? All you, what do you think? All these spirits coming from these L. G. B. T. Q. X. <laughs> all these spirits. See, something has opened up when you have a president in the White House and he passes. He, he passes laws telling, telling them it's all right, then that opens the door for these demons, these gates to come out, these gates to be opened, and hell has got gates. So it's like there's 12 gates in heaven, hell has got gates. And these gates are being opened. This is why he said the gates of hell. If you build on this rock, this word, upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus and chief cornerstone, upon this rock, I will build my church. And what? The gates that's being opened down in hell will not be able to prevail against you. Well, I mean to go ahead. Go this far into it. Finish reading that. And there arose a great storm. And there arose a great storm. A wind. A wind. And the waves beat into the ship. And the waves beat into the ship. So then it was now full. The devil's going to try to do everything he can to wind you down, to, to cause you to quit, throw your hands up, 
beat against you, beat against your body, your family, your home, your finances, your everything. To try to sink you, to try to sink you, cause you to compromise. Don't you do it. Don't you compromise your standards. Don't you compromise the faith that God's put in you. Don't you do it. That's right. Man. That's right. That's right. You're being watched. You're a light to this world. Don't, don't get out there and be like them. Don't dress like them. Don't act like them. Come out from among them. Be separated. Keep your standard. Keep what God's put in you. Finish reading that. And he was in the inner part of the ship. And he was in the inner part of the ship. Asleep on a pillow. Asleep on a pillow. And they awake him. And they awakened him. And say unto him. And said to him. Master. Master. Carest thou not to wake up. Wake up. We're in the storm. Wake up. He's in you. You got to wake him up. You got to get in there. Wake up what God's put inside of you. Carest thou not to repair us. He arose. He arose. And rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. And said unto the sea. He said to the sea. Peace. Peace. Be still. Be still. And the wind ceased. See, that's another line of the event. Jesus. He knows how to stop the winds. He knows how to stop the, the flood of deception. He knows how to stop the devil from destroying, stealing, killing, beating up on, beating up against you, beating your house down. He knows how to help you. Don't he? What was that for? Huh? Can I give you another one? Can I give you another one? This is your fifth line of defense right here. Right here. First John chapter 1 and verse 7. Chapter 1 and verse 7. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14 goes along with that. But 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, what does it say? But if we walk in the light, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, uh -huh. we have fellowship one with another. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus. And the what? The blood. The blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, his son. Yes. Cleanses us. Cleanses from us. From all sin. From all sin. See, this is your fifth line of defense. The blood. Not just the blood on the doorpost. But the blood has got to be. We need the blood in us. We don't just need the blood on us. We don't just need the blood around us. We need the blood in us. He said, except you drink my blood, you have what? No life in you. The blood testifies of how you overcome. The blood in you is going to stand up. The, how can the blood of Jesus be in me? Well, over there in Hebrews chapter 9, I think in verse 14, it's, it, it gives you an answer. Hebrews 9 and 14, what does it say? How much more? How much more? Shall the blood of Christ. There is, how much more shall the blood of Christ. Through the eternal spirit. It comes in through the eternal spirit. Hallelujah. It ain't just some on the doorpost. But it comes in through that eternal spirit. The blood is, is alive. Because the spirit has made it alive. The blood of Jesus is alive. It ain't some, on, some wall. Uh, it ain't something that's on a doorpost. It's not just something that's on a, cro on, on a cross to dry it up. But it's alive. Jesus took his blood through the Holy Ghost, through the eternal spirit. He took his blood into heaven and he, and he sprinkled it at the mercy seat. And that blood is alive. Hallelujah. The blood follows you because the spirit is alive. It's inside of you. And when the devil comes, when he sees the blood, the blood is Testifies against the devil. The blood in you. My God. Thank you, Jesus. What is that? And in your sixth trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Your sixth trouble. I mean, what, 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 name one of them. Name one of them with me. They wanted them five. Huh? The blood. Where? 
at your doorpost. Huh? Inside of you. Name another one, Sister Grace. Jesus. Jesus. That's right. He is the what? High priest of our profession. Name another one, Brother James. The wall of fire. <laughs> See, that's right. We got something. We got, we got God with us, people. Name another one. Uh, what are you, uh, that's listening? Angels. Angels. That's another one. Name another one, somebody. Huh? What? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I got one I'm looking at right now. I got one I'm looking at right now, but I'll, I'll stop right here. So it's great to do six shows. Come on, man. Well, y'all know it. I can name two of them. Brother Ephraim, I can name two of them. You want them? Yeah. There's one right here in um, Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Read that. Go ahead. Finally, my brethren. Finally, my brethren. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. See, there's nothing right there. Put on the whole armor of God. Yes. That he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yes. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities. Powers, powers and root and against rulers of darkness yes. of this world. Yes. Against spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. In high places. High places. Wherefore take unto you take unto you the whole armor. The whole armor of God. Of God. That you may be able to withstand. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day. And having done all to stand. Yes. Stand therefore. Uh -huh. Having your Lord's girt about the truth. And embrace it now. Amen. Right. Yes. And it goes on. I still got it. I bring it out Tuesday night. <laughs> what I'm telling you, saints. He said that your sixth trouble. Your sixth trouble is what the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the number of man, six. Your sixth trouble. When the um. Revelations chapter 13. That's your sixth chart. The mark of the beast. The number of his name. And all of this begins to the false prophet, the dragon, the antichrist. All of this is your sixth chart. God said, I'll keep you. I'll keep you. I ain't give you enough for right now. But then we'll go into your seven. No, what does that say about the seven one there? No evil shall touch. No evil. No one to have mercy. I'll pick that up Tuesday night. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. But you see all of this? Not just word, but the reality of it. God more than have provided a way for us to make it through these times. More than provided a way for us to get through all this that's fixed to be tremendous on this whole earth. Hallelujah. Come on, let's talk to him a few minutes. Brother James, get the mic. Let's pray a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. How many appreciate the Lord? Appreciate this word. 
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, bow your hands with the Father in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this line of defense. Lord, that you have purpose for us. God, you said, in our six troubles. God, you said, even in our seven, seven troubles. There should no evil touch us. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for those angels that, that camp round about us. But when we fear your word, when we fear and reverence you, Lord, we thank you, Lord, God, for being a standard for us. God, for pushing back the devil, pushing back all these powers and forces. Lord, we want these line, this line of defense, Lord, to be about us, this wall of fire. Help us, Lord, to get this word in us, hiding in our hearts that we not sin against you. You said that we eat your flesh and drink your blood. We were going to have your life in us. Lord, I want the blood in me. And when the devil come around, Lord, I can plead the blood of Jesus against them and drive them back. Lord, I want this line of defense, Lord. God, to be my protection, to be my help. Jesus, even when that storm arose, Lord, you told the winds to peace, be still. Peter said, save us. Lord, you spoke to those winds. You spoke to those storms. Lord, there's a storm of false doctrine. Lord, there's winds of false doctrine. There's a winds of strong delusions. Lord, all kind of unclean spirits and perversion. Lord, the devil trying to get us. Trying to bring us down. Trying to get us to not have faith. Trying to cause us to go to hell. But God, you said, upon the rock. You're going to build your church. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail against them. God, help us, Lord, to build upon this word tonight. God, by praying. God, by coming aside. You said he that dwell in the secret place. Of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Lord, you said you're going to send your angels to give charge round about us. Lord, if we dash our foot against a stone, Lord, we ain't going to trip up. Because that line of defense is going to be there to protect us. Jesus, have mercy upon us tonight. Help us, Lord, to pray. Hide ourselves in you. Got to draw it out of you so you can draw it out of us. Lord, don't let us, Lord. Now this word to go in one ear and out the other. We're living in a dangerous time right now. We're living in a time where we need your help. We're going to need your direction. We're going to need you to order our steps. In your word, let your word order us, Lord. Let it keep us. Let it guide us. Let it instruct us. God, have mercy upon us tonight. Help us, Lord, to take this word and build upon it. In the name of Jesus, help us to take all these lines of defense. Lord, the purpose in our hearts to keep it with us, this whole love of God, that we might be able to stand and withstand. In these evil days, even when the mark of the beast comes, God, we're going to have to have a line of defense to protect us and keep us. God, this is real. We thank you for your word. Help us not to take it for granted, but hide it in our hearts to pray and build ourselves up in it by praying in the Holy Ghost. Give us the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus, strengthen Brother Blue. God in his physical body. Be with him, Lord, as he travels to Tulsa tomorrow. Those that are traveling with him and driving him down there, Lord, protect him and keep him. Let the blood of Jesus, Lord, be applied over their lives. Keep them safe. Give them a safe trip. There and back. And touch those saints in Tulsa. God, all those that are online watching, God, strengthen all your people. Lift up a standard. When the enemy comes in, you said, like a flood, your spirit would lift up a standing. Lift up a standing for your people and all the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we love you and we thank you tonight. Jesus' name, give the Lord a good hand clap.